Hello, everybody, from wherever you are joining. So I guess it's good morning for some of you, good afternoon for others, and a good midday for some, some of the folks in Europe. So I want to welcome all of you for joining in on our webinar on how to qualify a digital X-ray system in the world of aerospace today. And we have a special guest with us, Jan Danielson from Kongsberg, who is going to tell a little bit about his journey with digital X-ray and, and his experience. But before we get started, I want to um, uh, welcome you as the host um, from VisiConsult. So we are um, one of the leading providers of digital X-ray systems, computer tomography solutions, and um, image evaluation software in the world of digital X-ray. We are a global company with over 250 people worldwide and offices all around the globe. But today, the topic will be digital transformation, how to get from an analog process like film inspection to digital radiography. And um, when we talk about that, we want to we wanna discuss some of the physical tools that are required for that, like um, an X-ray system, for example. But on the other hand, we also want to talk about um, the processes that you need to implement around that. So that could be procedures, that could be training, and that could be qualification with your customers. It's most important to recognize that um, it, there is no, no blueprint. Even though what Jan is telling you today, that is something that worked really, really well for his company, but for yours, it might be completely different. It really depends on the path that you're inspecting and your procedures. So, um, when implementing a DR system, uh, you first of all need to start at the point at the process where you are today. So when you're starting from a film environment, it's something completely different than if you already have, let's say, some, some CR in place. And um, what is always advisable is that you're very early on, speak to your customers and, and inquire their opinion on that too. Maybe Jan, would you do me a favor and we improvise a little bit and you just take over already at this point in time. Maybe it's a good uh, good timing for you to start sharing and share to the world how you at Kongsberg actually implemented a DR system and got it qualified in record time. So well, welcome to the webinar. M my name is uh, Jan Danielson and I shall today have a presentation and describe the decision process for new industrial x-ray system and how to qualify a digital x-ray system in an aerospace environment. I hope it will be an interesting and informative webinar for all of you. First, I will show you the agenda for this webinar. So the, the agenda for this webinar is first a presentation of myself and my background. Next point on the agenda is a short presentation and a video of the Kongsberg Group and the business areas and the division. And, uh, <clears throat> and what was important for Kongsberg Defense and Aerospace is the uh, code A when selecting a solution, how to create a project plan from order installation and FAT and SAT and how to realize the project plan <coughs> within an ambitious time frame and the test pieces. Next is the, the is installation, training and certification and qualification and approval, data stores and spare parts and what did we inspect prior to DR? What kind of parts does Code A inspect when using DR? And next is what kind of defects are we looking for? And what have changed with the implementation of the DR system? And in the end, I have the benefits and improvements that is time, cost, and quality, etc. And the, I shall show you the NETCAT certifi certificate, the gold level that we have here in Kongsberg. And the, the last is the questions and, uh, and the summary with a video 
of the digital exercise system in the NDT department. And it will take around one hour. It's a lot of points to go through. And the presentation for myself, I have more than 45 years experience in NDT, 35, 31 years in Sweden at uh, Volvero and the uh, GKN, GKN bought the aerospace division from Volvo 2012. And I started my new job and moved to Kongsberg, Norway 2009. So I have now 14 years, uh, soon 15 years at Kongsberg Defense Aerospace. I have been manager for 26 years in NIT and also five years product shop manager for GE and Pratt & Whitney components at Volvo Air in Sweden. Uh, I was responsible for uh, in the product shop manager for mainly combustible structures such as uh, diffuser case and compressor rear frames. I am a level three in several NIT met methods and techniques and my first level three was in RT for film. The, the last uh, seven, eight years, I'm also level three in digital radiography. My job now is a senior NDT specialist, responsible level three NDT and radiation and laser safety officer at the KDA. Next page is a short information of the Kongsberg Group and the business area. And at the same time, I will show you a video. It's one minute and 45 seconds long. The sound is in the video is muted, so I shall have the information. The Kongsberg Group is an international technology group headquartered in Kongsberg, Norway, and majority owned by Norway's government. It's founded in 1814 and had over 12,000 employees in more than 39 countries. 2014, the Kongsberg Group celebrated 200 years anniversary. It comprises four business areas, Kongsberg Maritime, Kongsberg Defense, Aerospace. This is the business area that I'm working for. Kongsberg Digital is a delivery software and solution. Kongsberg Discovery delivers software and solution to customers within maritime oil and gas. Kongsberg Defense Aerospace is a leading supplier of Defense, our products and systems span over a whole range, operating under or on the water, on the land, in the air, and in the space. I work in, in a division called Aerostructures and MRO, which is a key supplier to several major ongoing international programs, such as John Strike Missile, and naval strike missiles, remote weapon station, NH-90 helicopters, NASAMS, air defense systems, and F-35, and also MRO life cycle support. Could I, could I have long-term agreements with Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman for F-35 programs? Could I has 3,900 employees and present in 16 countries. <clears throat> 16 countries. Air Structures and MRO has 600 employees based in Kongsberg, Norway. So, this is the lot of factors that we went through before and when we ordered the DR system. It is a lot of important things to thinking about and go through together with the uh, with the manufacturer. It's both both descriptions and requirements for a new DR system. 
The equipment shall be capable to inspect metals, composites, composite sandwich to detect various types of FOD defects and and or other non-conformance. The system shall be capable to operate both in automated and in manual mode. If you make programs to inspect parts, it will be much faster and easier to check parts using the system. We shall include a complete listing of the DR inspection equipment and software, including a listing of the procedures used for operation, calibration and maintenance of the equipment. Check. You shall check with the manufacturer if the calibration procedure is in the software. Can the supplier do the maintenance of the equipment and, and system? And what is recommended and requirement for a system? Specify the items, devices, materials, components that are covered by the plan. Specify the types of uh, defects that will be covered by the inspection. And have test pieces with all kind of defects for a product you're planning to inspect in the new non-film system. Is some more uh, factors. Specify the testing that will be done to verify that the DR system is capable to, of detecting the defects. Include a description to meeting the inspection requirements as specified by the customers. This is important to have all the requirements from the customer and also aware of NADCAP requirements from the checklist. Most of the primes have NADCAP requirements if you are or will be a supplier to them. And include a description of how the technique will be verified and the fre frequency of the verification. Written policy for data format. That can be according to ASTM E2339 and storage. Storage and backup in the database at KDA. IT department set up a server to the DR system, system for all data, files and information that you must have in the folders. You must think about that each image have a size of three to three and a half me megabyte. DR their system must be evaluated prior ordering. So it's important to test with test pieces at the manufacturer. You must be 100% 100, 100 sure. You can, say, you can say confident that everything are in place. Meet, meet the customer requirements, test pieces is acceptable, etc. Before you ordering a new non-fin system. That was a lot of important factors that we go through before we before we order in the new system. Next was the in the in the preparation plan was to set up critical points and dates before you make we, we make the project plan and decide to invest in the new system. We set up seven very important actions and dates. One was the first that uh, myself, that the uh, KDA Level 3 RT, need additional experience training, training of minimum 240 hours. That is the new requirement from 2015 in NAH 410 and EN 4179. I need also, also 40 hours additional formal training in digital x-ray. That was a critical. And the drawings and manufacturing of fixtures to the selected parts. Initial system qualification of digital x-ray in uh, quarter three, 2016, latest October, 2016. Approvals 
and procedure techniques sheet before March 2007. That is critical capacity date for X-ray to change from film latest in uh, quarter two 2017. We have a big, big ramp up in 2017. So we have a lot of critical days. And personnel from Visa Consult shall do 40 hours training and practical on site at Kongsberg two weeks after the ins installation of the DR system. That was seven critical actions and points that we took, took up in our uh, preparation. And uh, here is the project plan from order to installation. The FIT, factor acceptance testing, and SAT, the site acceptance testing at KDA. That you can see on this uh, project plan, this is the, the order been signed the 13th of November 2015. We have a kickoff meeting with the VC Consult the first week in December. And after that, I start to build the system in January and be finished in June 2016. And we have planned the FIT in middle of the June. Critical delivery date was the last date in June 2016. So immediately after FIT, the system was shipped to Kongsberg for installation. For installation was planned that you can see the installation was planned in uh, in July, and it was an important date for uh, the factory is shut down for vacation here in uh, Norway, Ale Kongsberg, and the maintenance and maintenance three weeks in July uh, had been a perfect time to the install the system. The SIT was planned the second week in August and operated training and operated training in the week after with Visa Consult personnel. We had monthly meeting with Visa Consult and follow up all activities. Nothing in the plan became delayed. This is the project plan from from order to SIT. This took seven months, eight months to have everything in place. This is uh, the test pieces we use for a test at the uh, Visa Consult to verify that the DR system is capable to detect defects that we are looking for. We use two test specimens that we also shall use to the customer's uh, qualification and uh, approval. It's a duplex plate phantom. It's, there you can see number four. And, uh, and the uh, composite foam phantom is number five. Or all the reference test pieces have been checked with film and compared with a digital image on site at the supplier. Piece number one is a, that you can see here is a composite sandwich panel. There is very small cracks in the adhesive and some voids. Test pieces number two is a bonded honeycomb core structure in composite. It has unbonded cell edges it is distorted core and its gap between spar and the core and voids. Number three, it's a, it's a bonded, bonded honeycomb core structure and, the, and titanium spar. And the defects there we have is a gap between the titanium spar and the core. And it's a collapsed and distorted core. We have some FOD and this one. Number four is the duplex plate phantom in titanium in two different thickness. And number five is the reference quality phantom is a, a foam core with 
15 drilled holes in the different uh, depth, plus uh, two skins, one on the top and one in the bottom. This is the test piece to the DR system number four. And uh, this is the duplex plate phantom. And this is the titanium plate in two thickness, one for a minimum thickness of the material and one for a maximum thickness of the material for inspection. Two IQIs that you can see here is placed on the surface and one duplex wire IQ, IQI on the thinner plate. All the test that you have the special resolution, you have this uh, contrast to noise ratio, CNR. You have the CS, and you has, has also the SNR, single to noise ratio, and image and sharpness has, was approved and accepted. You can see the result on the on the right side there. So all the requirements. Uh, from the customers was met. This is the test pieces uh, that I call number five. Is this this is the reference quality phantom, and this is a composite sandwich foam with the uh, laminate skin on top and bottom side. That will be with that. Test pieces we using for SNR for two two percent. This is two percent. Its uh, result must be 130 or higher. And also for a contrast sensitivity for a foam extra specimen test. And the the requirements for that kind of part is that you said. But I see all the 15 holes on the image. Defect number 15 that you can see here is the diffuse. There is, but you can see that have a depth of one one percent of the thickness of the reference quality uh, phantom. Number 14, you see much better here. It's uh, have a depth of two percent. Of the thickness, and the result was where we saw all the 15 indication very clear, clearly on the image. Comstar was one of the first to inspect that kind of reference IQ using DDA system. So the result from the test, what I can that I can say that was excellent for us, and it was also excellent and or more for the customers. So everybody was happy of all this test we do that. <clears throat> Here is from the installation and, and the training that the, I said before, Code ordered the DR system XRH gantry with seven axis manipulation from Visa Consult in the end of November. 2015. The level three DR examination certification and training was in the quarter, the first quarter and the second quarter in 2016. All training education have been conducted and documented as described in NAH 410 and EN 4179. Requirements per NAS, oh, NAS 410 and EM 41 is minimum 40 hours formal and 240 hours of practical training. And it's coming from the revision 4, 2014. So all uh, companies who start will start to use digital system or we say non-film system must uh, have a uh, minimum 40 hours formal training and 240 hours practical training. 
and I do my my training. I do it is in a VC consult. I have forty hours equipment pregnant training there. I was in Maryland QC Labs in US and have forty hours with their level three. And I was in Sofa School in uh, Cardiff in UK and have all this theory, formal, and some of the practical training there. And 80 hours, I got 80 hours for a procedure writing and read a lot of this ASTM specifications. And I got 40 hours training and practical after the installation of the DR system here at the Kongsberg. This is the FIT, the factory acceptance test at VC Consult. That we check, there was the check of the completeness, check of system integration, integration the safety, uh, etc. We check of the manipulation, the manipulator rep repeatable, repeatability. For automated system, you must develop a process that demonstrates manipulator repeatability. We tested and checked with integrated laser pointer with cross, cross hair. The inspection of test sample parts, this is the five different test parts I showed you before. We measured of image quality. This, there is more than 10 requirements that you must go through. We check out the detector calibration and the pixel map. Check of image display, review mon monitor and resolution. And the image should contain sufficient information to ensure that the uh, traceability. And verification of documentation, general ma machine documentation. You must check all this documentation, mechanical drawings, the PC documentation, spare, spare part list, maintenance instruction, ele electronic documentation, and operation manual. And of course, this software, storage, Diconde, etc. And all the quality and machine requirements have been met during the FAT at VC Consult in, in June. I will, show, I will show you some important standard that we used into the DR qualification. For the last, what's I seven, eight years, it's, it's been a lot of uh, standards for for companies that will start to use uh, non-film system. So the first one is the uh, ASTM E2002. Is to determine to the total image and sharpness and basic spatial, spatial, basic spatial resolution of the digital detector arrays that you use in duplex wire. You have this ASTM E2597. It's a standard practice for manufacturing characterization of digital detector arrays. You have ASTM E2737. This practice describes the evaluation of DDA system for industrial radiology. It is to ensure that the evaluation of image quality meets the needs of users and their customers and enables process control and long-term stability of the DDA system. Most of the requirements are in this standard ASTM E2737. And for a uh, for for a uh, monitor there is the uh, SMPTE RP. 
this is the specification for monitor testing and describes the requirements for for brightness and uh, contrast and five more checks that you need to to ha to have and of course the netcap ac7140/10 is for digital radiography utilizes digital detector array DDA. Uh, it is a requirement for for suppliers seeking NADCAP accreditation in digital radiography and will ensure that NDT suppliers meet the requirements for NADCAP digital detector arrays DDA. The checklist had 36 pages when we start up 2007, but and now it's uh, I think it's uh, it's 58 pages for uh, in the checklist. And you can use uh, customer specification procedures and standard. We use we got the procedures and specifications from uh, our customers. But if the customers don't have a, a procedure or standards, you can use these standards that I said that you have here uh, up here. And one of the most important standard for us is the NADCAP checklist. That is all the requirements that for, from all the primes. That help a lot when you are, shall uh, qualify and uh, start up a uh, non-film system. Here is the qualification process and the results that in the middle of August that you can see that we started the five days training and qualification of the DR system. It was total 24 requirements to went through and we created also program to two parts and tested with a successful result. And KDA's plan was to qualify and approved in April, say latest in April 2007, eight months after the installation. This was the critical date as KDA, but because that we had a big ramp up in the production that I said before at the in uh, the middle of uh, 2017. But the qualification approval of the DR system took only eight weeks. And we had all the approvals already on the 10th of October 2016. You can see the approval day was the 10th of October 2016. And here is uh, the director of production, manager of special processes, and myself. And here is uh, some of the tests that we've done. And this is a result from 19 different checkpoints. You have all this spatial resolution, you have the signal to noise ratio, you have oh, CS, contrast sensitivity, and leg burn in measurements there. And, uh, but everything was accept, and you can see that it's coming from the ASTM E30. 27, 37, and uh, other standards. There is another thing you must think about is uh, data storage and the spare part. Uh, so. Data store, e, e, the uh, easy image to storing a code or server for digital images and back up to security proper storage conditions as required by customer requirements. They can access to archive anytime without the concern of image degradation. Each 
image are transferred direct in the X-ray server and will be sorted and archived in catalog structure. Our image uh, <coughs> shall be stored in a lossless file forma format as DICONDE for a period as defined by the KDA and customer requirements. And it is also very important to have a spare parts strategy in place, especially for those parts known for regular replacement and long delivery time. We discussed this with the manufacturer with the consultant to ensure that we are not caught with a shortage of parts necessary to keep this system running on schedule. We have called it we have uh, several of spare parts in store. We have similar float panel detector, high voltage cable, servo drivers, and some more spare parts. I can tell you a history that we, or an issue that we have for one year ago. The, the detector for us got broken for us, and we got a, a black screen. It was same day as we had audit in our digital extra system. So we changed the audit this day to start in film X-ray. And we were lucky if we had an exactly same detector in the storage. I contacted, contacted customers and informed them the plan and the Excel actions we will do to get a new approval before we can use our system again. We did, we did all the tests we need from the initial qualification 2016 and send the result to our customers and we got uh, approval same day, <coughs> same day. We had the stop in the DR system for only 12 hours and continues the next day with the audit in the DR system. So we were very, very lucky that we have it. And the most important was that the detector was uh, the, as similar that the, than we use in our system. So we had two of them. So now we uh, send it to repair and it's coming back. And uh, we have a uh, one more on the on the in the store. What did we inspect prior to DR? Kida performed all extra inspection by using film radi film radiography prior to to the investment of the DR system from Visa Consult. 2016. At the time, we had four NDT uh, and NDT inspectors working shift in the X-ray area. We inspect composite laminates, laminates, bonded lines, bonded honeycomb structure, metallic welded parts in many different thickness, and structures and special parts to the to the defense division. We bought film and chemicals for approximately 100,000 US dollar in 2016, and it should increase at least three times in 2018 if we continue to use film. And now we have bought film for 18,000 US dollar in year 2023. And the Air structure division, we have increased the production more, more than four times the last five years. And the film X-ray department was the bottleneck in pro production during 2016. The, the queue of parts to be inspected in film X-ray was more than 14 days before the transition from film to digital X-ray DDA. So it was very successful uh, implementation. The transition from film to digital X-ray, that is 
after the implementation, qualification, and customer approval of the DR system, we moved 90% of the production from film to use in DR in the new Vista Consult X-Rays Gentry DR cell. The queue of parts in the X-ray department is gone for many, many years now. We have reduced 85 to 90 percent of the X-ray workers of the use in digital X-ray instead of film. In 2016, the personal plan in our X-ray department was that we shall be 12 RT inspectors for 2018 if we were still using film to inspect parts. So the production has increased a lot, and by using the Visa Consult XRI gantry system, we are now only two extra inspectors instead of 12 that are inspecting the same numbers of parts. To transition from using conventional film to detect digital detector, we have increased efficiency and save money. We can receive images in real time and get results within seconds. Using film, you need to wait that you know that for film to de develop in a dark room before view viewing the radiograph and may maybe take some test exposures of films before you have the right density and the image quality. We can enlarge and enhance the image without affecting its clarity or quality. It is one of the best, and I can say that an important investment that Kongsberg had done the last eight years. The payback period for us became only eight months for this investment for, uh, for Kongsberg. It was really good. That is the defect we are looking for in composite laminates and the honeycomb structures and also in metallic welded parts. There is, you can see that is a void spore, this bonding, it's a lot of different defects. And most of them we have in the test pieces. And for metallic welded parts, we are looking for a inclusion, incomplete fusion, and incomplete penetration cracks, pores, undercut, underfill, and crater. This is the defect, some of the defects we are looking for in the, you can see that here is an composite bonded honeycomb structure. And here is a four full node bond separation in a bonded assembly part. And you can see there is a big difference to review digital images instead of film. And here, here you can see this is the node, node bond separations. And I have an, one more here. And here is on this image, you can see that this, you have this, here is a collapse core, like some uh, roofs and and it's a too large gap here between the core and the spar. And it's not acceptable according to the customer requirements. And on, on this image, I have two rows with the collapsed, you can see here, two rows collapsed core, and the, the, they are too close each other according to the requirements of minimum distance to, uh, to an adjusted indications. It's really good images that you can see. Here's another. And this is a digital image of a honeycomb core with parallel cracks to ribbon direction between the core cells up to eight, eight roofs in a potted area. You, you see here all the cracks go through 
uh, core cells. Uh, and there is one more. There is a. This is a digital image from an inspection uh, honeycomb sandwich panel with crack along the edge of the core in the adhesive. You can see the crack here. And uh, and we have cut up it, cut up, and uh, in in the microscope you can see the cracks in the adhesive here, very very clear. And I have one more here. There is um, a digital image from the inspection of EB weld after final machining. You can't see any weld, but you have the weld here. And I have an indication, and it is uh, an incomplete fusion there. There is, you had, first you have one EB welding, and after that you have a uh, cosmetic EB welds, and I meet here, and and we have this indication between the first and the second uh, EB weld. And you can see on the IQE here too, it's, it's no problem to see three, three holes on that, so it's a really good uh, quality of the image. What have we changed with the implementation of the DR system? The XRH gantry DR system is perfect for our parts and give us high quality images. This consult is manufacturing exactly the DR system that is suitable for our products. And the DR system gives us a high value for in investment. It's payback for around eight months, so that was a little bit crazy. So the most positive surprise for us is that we have reduced 85 to 90 percent of the work hours in the X-ray department. The time from installation to qualification and approval was only eight weeks, and we were NEDCAP accredited the year after. And that is, I think, and I heard that is from other that it must be a world record in the aerospace business. Uh, other companies who are qualified other DR system before for, before us has spent at least seven eight months in the qualification and approval process. So there is a lot of positive things by using the DR system DDA instead of film X ray. For us in the NIT department, it has been a better let's say, work environment for X-ray inspectors after implementation when we inspect an aerospace part using digital X-ray. And I have also more let's say, motivation and engaging inspectors now. The Visa Consult digital extra system have met more than KDA and, and the TB department expectations and of course the requirements. And it is a really good investment for KDA. So the the job so the job has been more interesting for all. Ex that you know oh, from my my experience that exposure films every day during the working hours can be tough and they can be hard and not inspiring for many extra inspectors. So I have some experience myself of that from my time as level one and level two. So and it's much, much easier to use this digital system instead for films. This is the, our digital extra system from Visa Consult. That you can see, we have 
We have a 160 kilovolts extra tube with a focus spot of uh, 0.4 millimeters, the smallest, and uh, one millimeter, the largest. The detector is the Perker Almer with the pixel size of 74.8 microns. And this system that you can see here is equipped with a crash prot protection for a panel and tube. And it, it is installed movable sensors. And we are using a distance of uh, 3,000 millimeters, 180 inches from X-ray tube to the detector. We can say the source, the source to detector distance. Manipulator contains seven axes and uh, we have a working en envelope for the system is the X axis is four meters and 4,000 millimeters, same as 157 inches. And the Y axis is the, the width is 3,000 millimeters, 118 inches, and the set axis, the height, is 1,600 millimeters, is 63 inches. So we can use this room for a very, very big part. And then we have a part up to three meters is the long. And here is the control room. Is placed four monitors at the desk that we can see here, and one one medical monitor for image processing, one standard monitor for, for machine control is that, and two monitor for room cameras. In addition, are install installed the joysticks, start and stop buttons, e stop. Uh, we have also an uh, offline review station with medical. This is a medical monitor and desktop PC. The image processing system is also running on this station. The images captured by the system are reviewed by this this station. So there is uh, several advantages to using digital X-ray. There is uh, time saving, you have the cost saving, you have the quality, and so so for us that we have the time saving was we reduced 85 to 90 percent of the work hours of the using the system. When we transitioned the to DR, we were able to operate with a much smaller X-ray team. The plan was, if we still use film, we should be 12 uh, RT operators, and now we are only two, to, both for film and digital X-ray. <laughs> There's much shorter exposure time than film radiography, that we have the honeycomb structures, that we have an exposure time of two and a half to five minutes per exposure when we use film. And for digital, there is three to five seconds per exposure. And with time saving, we wait, wait for the development process, a reloading of film is no longer necessary. And the cost sav savings, we, we cut the personal cost in the X-ray department by 80%. We reduce more than 85% time per part. We eliminate this chemistry to very low consuming in the X-ray department. Film cost reduced with 90%. We still have 10% of parts that we need to use film and easily transfer the images on, onto a hard drive, faster processing time, and no processor requiring regular maintenance. And the quality is the same or better. For us, 
I think for us it has been better, and that I said before, that it's much, much easier to review the images on the you're sitting on a look at the image on the on a monitor instead of sitting with the uh, and look at the film on the viewer. So that this big, big difference. And a high quality images are possible because the digital radiography has specialized software that you can electronically manipulate images for improved definitions. Simplifies evaluation of digital images. You can enlarge and enhance the images. Can assess the archive anytime without the concern of image degradation. You have high degree of automation. Could you are using program to 95% of all parts we have program for, for in the, our system. And one of the other things is that it's much easier to re report NCR and transfer that to the customer electronically. And this is save a lot of time for operators. We using and using a detector with a high resolution and small pixel size is one of the most important things. And you can see that when you are at the manufacturer and test that if you test a big detector with a relatively large uh, pixel size, you have very, very big problem to meet the requirements from the standards. So it's it's one of the most important is the detector for a system. And uh, this is what we are. We are accredited in, and have the gold level in four methods in Kongsberg. We have this uh, for penetrant inspection slash one and slash three is for ultrasonic. We have uh, slash four and this is for film. And 10 is for a digital radiography detector array. And uh, we had, have had zero NCR in all NEDCAP customers and AS9100 audits for digital X-ray. So it's a really good system for that we have and for us and for the customers. So there is oh it's a uh, one hour I can see that <laughs> my watch here. Thank thank you yeah yeah don't don't worry uh, thanks a lot for this comprehensive overview there's a lot of questions very engaging questions so what I will do I have the questions here Jan and I will just read them to you so you can answer them to the to the group uh, and and the first one I see here is from Ata um, what were the challenges for the parts where you still had to use film was it geometry was it size what was the reason why you are currently still using film, and is there any any plan to change that? Uh, can you repeat that to, again, Leonard? Oh, what, what? Yes. Yeah. The question is, what what were the challenges, or why are you still using film for certain parts currently today? Is it the geometry of the part? Uh, is it the size of the part? And maybe you can explain a little bit on your plans regarding this last film section. Uh, that is the geometry of the part. That is the that is one of the reasons that the, you mean that we we still use film, or yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is the geometry that you must you must have a place uh, for the part so you can uh, you. <clears throat> put the detector uh, behind it, so we have some parts that we can't use um, digital because the detector is too too large. So, so it is. <gasps> is Very that? Uh, yeah, I think this is this is perfect. And there's currently some oh. some evaluations ongoing to switch to CR on the remaining film shots, mm. right? To go fully mm. digital. But yeah. I thought the main reason to use still film is um, if you can, if you have to squeeze it in tight holes, for example. Yeah, yeah, but uh, this year is, this is we have a plan to go over to CR and uh, 
stop to use uh, films and uh, chemistry and everything that. So uh, the plan for us is uh, to have everything is digital here at Kongsberg this year. Very good. Then there's another question. Um, was KDA able to achieve the same sensitivity and quality with DR as with film? The same, uh, yeah, yeah. The same sensitivity for DR yes. and uh, for film. Yeah, we have we have a uh, better sensitivity for DR than film because that is, I can say that this is, this is uh, the most important is detector. We have tested with other detectors and uh, that you can have a problem with the sensitivity. But if you use if you use a detector with very small uh, pixel size and uh, it's maybe it's cost a little bit more, but you get much, much better results. So this is what we, so the detector that we took 2016 was the, uh, have the smallest pixel size on the market just that time. Very good. And the, so the sensitivity, question. So the sensitivity that from that uh, that I can say that is that is true. That this coming back, the customer is coming back when we send in an NCR on the part that we have some defects, and they coming back and say the picture is is so good that what what have you for for a system and <laughs> so. Uh, that is the feedback that we got from the customers that in the, uh, when they see our images. Very good. Then there's a follow up one. Uh, is there a different requirement for X-ray generator when you switch from digital to from film? And I can maybe answer this from a manufacturer perspective. Yes, typically mm -hmm. you need for digital, you need a smaller focus spot than for film because you use magnification. So typically if you have a film tube, you can't just continue to use them in digital in most situations. It, it depends a little bit on the situation. Mm, yes. Um, there is more question. What's the size of the panel? The size of the panel is uh, uh, the it's fourteen. We have fifteen centimeters to twelve centimeters. To uh, I think the exposure area is on the. Exactly. To, uh, yeah, so yeah. but there is so very short exposure time. So if you take 50 more exposure with, to have a smaller uh, uh, detector instead for a larger, that is maybe take oh, five minutes more or something, but you got that you will have a better results. Yes, there is many different other sizes. So there's bigger sizes. It's the question of what is the right solution for every application. So there's also bigger detectors available with high resolution. Oh. And you, you, you're bigger than, than the detector is this more expensive. <laughs> so. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Yes. Uh -huh. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, there's another question from Palika. I think um, um, is DDA compatible with gamma rays? Um, I can answer this maybe from a manufacturer point because I think you are not using gamma rays, uh, Jan. Mm -hmm. Yes, no, this is possible. Do. It has it has um, there are some limitations to what you can do, and there's potential also potential implications on detector lifetime. But in general, yes, you can use DDAs also with isotopes and gamma radiography. Uh, there's one more question from Glenn. Um, KDA's IT group set up their own image storage. Was it with a Windows database or Dicondi? And Dicondi. Dicondi, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But you are you are using a Windows storage at this point in time, um, but uh, it could be also connected to a, to a PAC storage, so to a real storage database system. But I yeah, think yeah. in your case, you use a server, a storage server. Yeah. Uh, there is one more question from Husnain Ali. Um, a DR system can show defects that are not visible through the conventional RT. And your point is that most of the standards are written towards RT. Um, so Jan, how did you deal with standards that are based on classical RT uh, to inspect parts digitally? 
did you just transfer them one to one or did you talk to your customers? How did you go about that? Uh, or did you not encounter it? Maybe could also be. I oh, I don't understand really well. Sorry, but uh, uh, can you say again what? Yes, in, in some cases there is standards uh, from customers like requirements written on film. On film, film yeah, technology. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's so if right. you then use digital technology, you have different metrics, different IQIs. Um, how did you convert um, parts from film to digital if there was a lack of requirements and specifications and standards around it? Did you encounter this? Uh, that, but uh, for us, well, uh, we got uh, the requirements for the DR system from uh, the, the the customer and. Uh, you can't use the same requirements that you use for uh, film for the DR. That is, you can't do that. Yes. So you must have a, the you must have a requirements from customer. If yes, I I would I agree from a manufacturer point of view. Yeah, yeah. So, but we use a lot of this uh, NADCAP checklist. That is, there is uh, all the requirements from the all the primes. So. It's very helpful. Very good. Roland had a question um, from your everyday experience. Do you see any difference in using costly medical monitors instead of standard mon modern monitors? I think, Jan, you are using medical monitors to re to review the images, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, uh, because you have the requirements of this, uh, both, both brightness and contrast and uh, other requirements. and. Uh, so you, I, I think you can't use another uh, monitor than uh, medical monitors. Yes, we would agree. Uh, there is so a you, difference uh, in quality. So you, you, you're measuring the the light. You have the candles. There is the requirements about uh, 250 uh, to one is the minimum requirements for um, for uh, brightness and. Uh, I say what well, uh, we say well, more is the contrast is a high resolution full contrast is a high frequency fluctuation and the brightness contrast ratio. There's a lot of uh, requirements, and uh, so for us uh, we can't use another uh, monitor than a medical monitor. Yeah, we we would agree. Uh, both from a qualitative standpoint, there is a difference between monitors, but also from a regulatory standpoint, it's just mm -hmm. in the checklist. Uh, that means even if it would work without, you just oh. will not get the system qualified. So I oh. we I totally concur. There's there's yeah, a follow-up that... question from. Oh, sorry, yeah. Oh well, yeah, I said that it's uh, the the requirement for uh, the monitor is uh, is coming from the checklist from NADCAP. I have all these. Points. I have a lot of um, lot of uh, points in the in the checklist of the monitor that you must uh, meet. Perfect. There's a follow up question from Roland. Um, is it allowed to use image processing filters, image enhancements in in the aerospace environment, Jan? Image image processing filters enhancing the image. Like a sharpening filter or um, contrast filter. No, not no. We can't use that. We are not allowed for our customers to use that. But you can use it to, if you will review films that you have. But uh, when you the what say the original uh, image is uh, when you. Exposure to the part is uh, that we can't use the filter or other things. So we're not allowed to that. So so what, what we also see in many cases, Jan, you are allowed to use them, but you are not allowed to make a decision based on them. So the final yeah, decision okay, has to be yeah, based yeah. on the raw image and you need to save the raw image. But of course yeah. you can use image filters in between. Yeah, yeah, that we do, we use that. Yeah, yeah, that's right, Leonard, that's right. We use the filter and uh, and uh, that we can uh, manipulate it a little bit with the film, but uh, the the raw what what do you say that uh, the the raw image the raw image yes yes that is always this from the 
when you took the, the image on the part. So that is what we save in the in the in the server. Very good. Then there's one last question that I can see uh, from Tobias. Uh, is the system using ADR to so automatic defect recognition? And uh, <laughs> yeah, and this uh, is something we look at together, right? But this system is currently not using ADR yet. We are we have started a project here in the summer uh, with uh, to use that for some of the parts for us that we have a lot of um, images, as I say, exposures for uh, some of the parts and. Uh, and uh, we have a ca uh, kind of defects and uh, we have put them in uh, AI techniques and see if we can use that. And it's, it still looks really good. So, and we shall have uh, some more information from uh, you, Leonard, later about that. Yeah, this is, the, this is a great <laughs> question for maybe a follow-up <laughs> seminar. Yeah, yeah, but in our, in our plan here, 2000, we say this year and next year is the, that we maybe have uh, can use that for. Yeah. Uh, but you, this is only for uh, what say help us, but not uh, for uh, we can. Uh, oh, we can't use it. But we need uh, approval from the customers and uh, uh, other for. Um, to, for now it is not approved in the airspace. Exactly. So ADR currently is only an assisted feature in the aerospace environment for regulatory reasons. And uh, VZ Consult, for example, has developed um, an AI-based um, automated defect recognition tool that's called Compass. So this would be a cool topic for one of the follow-up seminars. And Kongs, this is also something that Kongsberg looks in, mm. in detail. So maybe the last question is a good one to close it because we are already a little bit over time. I thank you for your patience. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so Halit uh, asked, um, hello Halit, uh, hello to Turkey. Um, will this uh, presentation be on YouTube? And yes, we will upload it um, after the seminar. You will also get an email, all re registered participants get an email with some of the key takeaways and with the recording. So you will be able to watch this offline or to show it to your colleagues. And with that, I want to uh, extend my big gratitude to Jan for taking the time and guiding us through your journey to a DR system. I think it was incredibly interesting. And I thank everybody for listening in. We had close to 100 participants, a lot of great questions. Thanks, everybody, for your time. I wish you a great day, a great rest of the week. Thanks a lot. Thank you.